I'm very, very sorry. I did miss the program. It is the first time in my life, and I have to apologize for you. And I would do, try to do my best to show the general concepts of intramedullary nailing, not only in the femur. How does IMNA work? It works with relative stability. What kind of types of nail? A little aspect of the surgical techniques and the indications. That you know, the function of IM nail is to maintain fracture reduction in length and the alignment and rotation until we got our final healing. That is going to be as a secondary and a callus formation. It happens because of the principle of relative stability when we have motion at the fracture side of this bony fragment, but a controlled and not uh, unnecessary too much uh, movement. This is what we want, secondary healing by callus formation. Today, we are very lucky to have several options to use IMNA, but we need to know how it works. It works as a splint when you use it in non-locket or in the dynamic mode, and it works as a support when you use it in a locket manner. When you use a locket or non-locket, it's very important uh, to understand that both of them are a technique and not a uh, uh, quality of the implant itself. So both statically or dynamic is just a matter of technique. This is a very important aspect how the nail is uh, very good for diaphyseal uh, bones because of the working length. That is better advantage uh, over the plate. That is the distance between the two points of contact between nail and bone within the medullary canal. Or it means it is the distance from the first lower screw and the first and the lower uh, distal screw, as you can see uh, here. This rigidity of the working lens, it's very important because as long as you go, you lose uh, rigidity in flexion, but it does not uh, lose that much in, in torsion. The design is very important. It can be slotted or solid, and, and there, is, there is a very uh, good reason to use uh, slotted uh, solid nail because it's uh, uh, more resistant uh, to infection as well as the stainless steel against titanium. Titanium has a very uh, resistant to infection, and uh, in the modern program, we already have uh, nails that have a surface to prevent bacteria adhesion. Again, uh, rim or not rim, it's not related to the nail itself. It is a technique. You can use both nails either way. It's a technique, and it's not uh, related only for the nail. I might use uh, my mistake for good because this is a very good paper and it was republished as a classical paper uh, on 2000, the Brumbach paper, saying this is the reason I choose nail for diaphyseal fractures of the femur because locket and remit nail, I can get 97 to 100 percent union and a less time at the operation with less blood loss and a more biological and friendly technique. If you go to an IM nail locked in no remit, this uh, show clear is that we have uh, deal with more uh, non-unions and uh, delayed unions, as in this paper, the number is 84% union, and we need more procedure and more implant failures with these thin nails. So I think this, is, this could be the great message. This is the gold standard in diaphyseal fracture. Why? Because it's a load sharing. Instead, the, the plate is load bearing. It means when you get a fracture, you compress the fraction and you put the plate. There is a tension uh, force on one side and there is going to be a compression force uh, in the other side. So the, the plate is loaded under tension. If you have a gap, uh, on the medial side, what's going to happen? We're going to have a deviation and a plate is going to break. The nail is in another uh, environment. You can't, uh, as it's load sharing and work centrally in the medullary canal, even if you have a gap, that bending moment won't uh, be uh, good enough to, to dis deviate and displace of this fracture. So the nail, uh, when you use it to lock it, it has a very good stability for rotation, axial and angular forces. And the design, solid of hollow, will uh, make a difference with solid nail had a better uh, resistance, as well as the contact of the nail and the cortex will increase resistance, and if you use locket screw, stability is going to be better. 
Today, we, uh, we are very uh, fortunate to have several uh, options of locking screw and nail design. This is the new design with a new entry point that allow us to better control displacement, angulation, shortening, and rotation. It is a very, very important part of this uh, system is the locking screw. The locking screw works as a pin, so the core diameter is very, very important and not the thread diameter because uh, they have a minimal pull-out uh, resistance force. But today, with the new uh, techniques and the new uh, implants, we have multi-planner position of this screw that will increase our stability and we increase the bone implant contact and we have uh, less movement of this uh, fragment. The spiral blade is its a new uh, advantage because it increases the surface of this uh, implant and gives you more resistance to cut out rotation and loosening. As you can see here uh, on the spiral blade on the femur, it is less bone removal because actually the blade plate compacts the bone uh, comparing with system when you uh, have a screw that in actually you remove bone. When you talk about nail stability, we go all the way from the best uh, we can. It's a locket, rimmed nail, and the most uh, flexible system is uh, the elastic nail. Surgical technique, it's an atraumatic and minimally invasive. It's the true biological uh, approach because preserve the vascularization uh, during the whole procedure. The key problem with nail, no matter where you are, and in the femur, because it's, it's uh, what you're talking about, uh, the insertion point is the key. It's the key because if you don't get the right entry point, you're going to end up with mall alignment or it's going to be difficult to insert the nail Every time you, you feel that it's very difficult to insert the nail, think about the entry point and you might need to redo it. You might extend the fracture if you get an entry point uh, too angulated and it's going to break. Or it can give you an error in the proximal lock or it can uh, make some articular damage like this uh, guy here. Our uh, uh, plate uh, lovers will say, I said, why use a retrograde nail? Look at the damage for the cartilage. Is this a problem of the implant or is it a bad technique uh, trying to find the correct place to put the nail? We cannot blame uh, the, the implant, but we can blame the surgeon. Insertion point, it's very, very important. It's nail dependent. It depends on the design of the nail. We have uh, here two different options. It's a femoral nail. But one goes through the piriformis fossa, and the other one goes through the trochanteric, uh, is a trochanteric entry point. So you can mix both entry points because you're going to end up with deviation, more fracture. So before you get, I'm going to do a piriformis fossa entry point, make sure that nail goes in that place. This is what we have today. We have the classic piriformis fossa, and we have the new uh, lateral entry point. This is piriformis and lateral, and we have, as you can see here in red, the trochanteric entry point. For the femur, almost the same uh, type of fractures, we can choose between three different nails, but we cannot put the green one where uh, the red one should go. So think about the nail, the design, and then you're going to find the correct insertion point. Because look at this, uh, we're not talking about the nail, but none of these should be on where they are. No matter how good you are with the entry point of the universal nail, is going to end up with a various deviation. Uh, even the, uh, on the right side, you can see entry point on a straight nail, various deviation, and as well as it happens in the tibia. We used to say that insertion point, it's a door. It's a door for the hell or it's a door for the heaven. You choose which door you want to open, but you need to meet somebody on the other side of the door. Reduction for nailing, it's indirect reduction because we're talking about the biological osteosynthesis. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to do as a percutaneous. We had to do limited open, but it, as a biological technique, that's what we want to do. As in a, this case, it's a polytrauma patient, uh, some uh, several uh, fractures, but this is uh, what we 
talking about the subtrochanteric fracture, we want to reduce that fragment to get alignment and rotation corrected. We can use this technique as a joystick. We can manipulate, correct deflection, external rotation, and we can insert the nail without any problems. This is uh, the reduction. This is the consolidation of the fracture, and this is the re uh, patient returning to function. Very good friend, and you already uh, saw a presentation uh, on the distal femur of the polar screw. Polar screw is a very, very good uh, reduction tool to decrease the medullary canal and achieve nail contact. That's what we want. Polar screw, we want the cortex that's too far from the nail to be very close to the nail and act as a true bone cortex, facilitating alignment and increasing stability. Uh, this is what happens if you insert the UTN. It's funny, the, the lecture is about femur. Uh, but nev nothing happens because the, the nail is too thin for that canal. But if you got the polar screw, what we do, we just move that cortex and we can use it as a point to uh, lever arm to reduce the fraction, and it will keep as a cortex that and you can see is far from that screw. Okay, we did a, you did, not me, a very good uh, reduction. You got your nail. Is the surgery done? What else do we need to do? We need to check our uh, task. If I had this uh, early in the morning, I would be so shamed. Quality control. We need to control your reduction. The nail is in place. We used to say, what, what kind of surgery did this morning? I, I put a nail. Okay, did you perform an osteosynthesis with the nail? Because insert the nail, any monkey can do. We need to check reduction, alignment, angulation, and rotation before you end up the, 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 the surgery locking the screws and uh, understand what kind of fixation the pattern that's gonna load. When to use it? This could be just one slide uh, for my lecture. Diaphysi fracture or the domain of intramedullary nail. It's in the AO book. It's going to be in the next, it's in the new edition because this is now the clear, clear indication. Diaphysi fractures with modern uh, nails with better screw positioning and angular stability, we can use in the met metaphysi fracture. And today results will tell us that the upper extremity is not as good as in the lower extremity. There is uh, one uh, final question. Can we use these nails uh, in very simple fractures in, with uh, relative stability? Remember that a pairing is a strain theory that in these cases uh, absolute stability works better. This is the case of the femur. Very uh, simple fracture, integrate straight nail. This is uh, what's going on. What do you think is going to heal? You have a little a gap or the strain is high. Just wait a little bit and the situation gets worse. You can see the fracture line even better. But this is relative stability. There is motion. You did it wrong. And then something uh, starts to appear. And if you wait a little bit more, we're going to have the callus formation. That's what we need to remember. I am nail will heal with callus formation. It's relative stability, even uh, in a very uh, simple fracture. Just another example to see, uh, to show the other side of the nail, that's a flexible nail for pediatrics. Uh, I think that today, even the pediatric indication for all the implants, what uh, you already saw, we have uh, special nails for adolescents that will not bother uh, the gross plate, or we can use the elastic nail. And again, this is elastic callus formation, and then you have a true mass consolidation. Another one, another simple case, reduction, closed reduction, nail, and healing. So in summary, I am nail, not on, in long bones, a method of relative stability. We can use it with several types of nail, we can't achieve union in simple fracture, but it's all depend with surgical technique. Thank you very much, and again, my sincere apologies for my mistake.